just want to thank everyone for joining the Glen Ellen Public Library today for our Medicare Supplemental Insurance Program. Um, we will begin promptly at 2 p.m. It's exactly 1.58 now. We are recording this and we hope to make this available to people at a later date. Um, if you'd like to email me, my email address is tking at g-e-p-l dot org for information regarding the recording or any other additional questions you may have. My name is Tanya King. I hope you enjoy our seminar. And Paige, I'm going to leave it to you to start in two minutes. I'm going to mute myself, okay? Sounds good. Thank you. So it's three o'clock, um, actually three o'clock here in New York, two o'clock in Glen Ellen. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today to talk about Medicare supplement insurance, how to pick the right plan and get the best rate. I'm going to also uh, share some secrets with you today about Medicare insurance, Medigap. So um, my name is Paige Grillo. I'm an account manager with Weiss Financial Ratings. I'm not uh, an insurance salesman. Uh, what I do is work with libraries to get them to subscribe to the Weiss Financial Ratings database. And once they do, I provide support through programs like this. So let's go ahead and get started. I have to do something so I don't turn my computer off by mistake. There we go. Um, so Weiss Financial Ratings and Gray House Publishing teamed up to bring you this resource. We're independent, unbiased, and accurate. So throughout this discussion, we're going to um, help you navigate through the complicated subject of Medicare. And the goal is to help you to tell you about the choices you have available and help you save as much money as possible. When we're done, you'll be able to download your own report and uh, it's gonna help you find and select the best Medicare supplement insurance policy for you with the strongest companies for the least amount of money. And the best part is you get to do it for free because your library subscribes to the Weiss Financial Ratings Database. So here's what we're gonna cover. Uh, we're gonna talk about major expenses that Medicare doesn't pay for. Um, when is open enrollment? What does that mean? why Medigap can be better than Medicare Advantage. We're not saying that it is. Uh, for some people, it might be so. And then finally, how to get lower premiums and save hundreds, possibly thousands of dollars. So let's get started. Um, talking about Medicare, when do you join, when can you join Medicare? So uh, when you're turning 65, you have a seven month initial enrollment period. So the three months before your birthday month, the month of your birthday, and then three months following. So um, if you're born in July, that would be April, May, June for the three months prior, obviously July for the month of your birthday, and then August, September, October for the three months after. Um, and then uh, open enrollment, we're actually in open enrollment right now. It runs from October 15th to December 7th every year. So if you're already enrolled in uh, Medicare, that's the time of year that if you want to make any changes to your um, what you're doing, whether it's with a different company, a different plan, that's when you would do that. 
if you are still working and covered by insurance or your spouse is still working and you get insurance through them, uh, Medicare can supplement your employer coverage by, um, I'd say, go ahead and sign up for Medicare Part A. That doesn't cost you anything and it gets you into the system, so to speak. Um, easy to do, you go online to medicare.gov and you take care of it that way. So I would say, um, if any of you are in that seven month initial enrollment period, go ahead and get your part A done. Um, just, it, it helps you out down the road. So, um, so here we're gonna talk a little bit more about the different uh, parts of Medicare coverage. So first we have Medicare part A, which is your hospital insurance. Medicare part B is medical insurance. Part C um, is Medicare Advantage. You probably hear the ads on, there's lots of ads on TV right now about Medicare. So Medicare Advantage is Part C. And then Part D is your prescription drug coverage. So uh, looking at Part A, this covers hospital related services and emergency care, such as inpatient hospitalization, home health services, skilled nursing services, and hospice but it doesn't cover all of your hospital costs and it doesn't cover long-term care. Looking at Medicare Part B, uh, this is regular medical care and helps with outpatient services, uh, doctor office visits, laboratory services, ambulance, and diagnostic services. So you might think that if you just had Part A and Part B, you'd be covered, but we're gonna see that that's not the case. So Medicare doesn't cover all of the costs associated with hospital and medical care, and it doesn't include prescription drug coverage. So um, looking at out-of-pocket costs, so if you just had your Medicare Part A and Part B, these are um, some of the out-of-pocket costs that you would need to pay. This is based on 2020. There's no uh, updated information yet for 2021. So make the assumption that the numbers are gonna be the same or a little different. They could go down a little or go up a little, but it wouldn't be a lot in either direction. So looking at part A, right off the bat, you've got a deductible of $1,408. So um, if you go into the hospital um, days one through 60, you're gonna cost you $1,408. That's your deductible. And then um, up to 60 days, Medicare pays for it. Going down um, to the next square below it, days 61 through 90 are gonna cost you $352 per day. If you're in the hospital 91 days to 150 days, that's $704 per day. Skilled nursing, the first 20 days are covered. After that, uh, you pay $176 per day up to 100 days. After 100 days, it's gonna cost you 100%. If you look at going back up to the top, the second square uh, to the right, part B, your annual deductible is $198 per year. And then um, outpatient services and medical supplies, most will be covered. Um, most of the, Medic the Medicare approved expenses will be covered at 80% and you'll be responsible for 20%. You also have a monthly premium that's 100, it starts at $144.60. It's based on your income. So depending on what that is, um, it can go up from there, but the lowest it will be is $144.60. So some other hidden costs of Medicare prescription drugs, vision care, emergency care abroad, dental, and hearing aids. So none of these things are covered. So these are some gaps in coverage that you need to fill in. So um, when Medicare was established in 1965, it wasn't designed to cover all of the medical care for your senior years. It was designed for basic needs but you do have choices uh, with regard to your health care. You can stick with part A and part B, or you could purchase additional coverage. Um, you make this decision based on your unique needs. So you do have two choices to fill in the gaps. There's Medicare Advantage part C, 
or Medicare Supplemental Insurance, known as Medigap. That's what the Weiss, um, fun, excuse me, the database with the Medigap tool, that's what that takes care of. It gives you all the information for that. Excuse me. <coughs> um, so let's take a look. So Medicare Advantage Part C, um, this coverage is provided by private insurance and is limited to a defined network of doctors and providers. What it does is it combines your Part A and your Part B, and sometimes it also will include um, prescription drugs. Supplement insurance, otherwise known as Medigap, covers deductibles, co-payments, and co-insurance, and it was designed to fill in the gaps that Medicare Part A and Part B don't cover. So if we look at these kind of side by side here, Medigap is your original Medicare. So you keep that part A and part B, and then you add in the supplement. You will have higher premiums, but no co-pays. Um, you'll have freedom to choose your doctors. No referrals will be necessary. Um, routine services such as vision, hearing, dental are not covered. Um, and you can be, you'll be covered anywhere in the United States and some of the plans do offer coverage abroad. Looking at Medicare Advantage, so basically you have the choice of Medicare, Medigap or Medicare Advantage. If you choose Medica Medicare Advantage, um, you're not working with original Medicare. Um, original Medicare is sort of swallowed up by Medicare Advantage. So you generally have lower premiums, but you'll have co-pays you most likely will be restricted to a network, need referrals for specialists, but many plans do include extra benefits such as vision, hearing, dental, and fitness. Outside of your service area, you're limited to emergency services only. So if you're traveling somewhere in the country, visiting family, uh, and you get sick, you're only going to get emergency services. You would have to return home for any additional care. So I talked about secrets at the very beginning. The first secret is Medigap plans offer identical coverage. So let's talk about that a little bit more to understand. So there are 10 Medigap plans. Um, they're known by letters, uh, A through N. And for every lettered plan, uh, any insurer that offers that plan is going to provide the same exact coverage benefits that every other insurer is providing. These plans are regulated by the federal government, so the coverage with, within each letter plan is the same regardless of who you choose to buy it from. So to say that even simpler, all, all plan A's have the exact same coverage, all plan B's are the same, all plan F's are the same, all plan G's are the same. And that goes for um, wherever you live. So um, if you move to California and you want plan A, it's going to be the exact same coverage as the plan A in Glen Ellen was, regardless of who you purchase it from. So um, you get to pick the plan that has the coverage you want, and you're able to compare one insurer to another, and then you can pick the plan that has the best rate for you. So um, when you're picking a Medigap plan, you some things that you want to consider. Um, first off is what is your budget? Uh, if, you've, if you've set aside up, you've got a budget um, in mind for what you want to spend on your insurance, medical insurance, um, that's job one to, you know, the first thing you want to know. Um, do you want or do you think you'll need nursing care in the future? looking at family medical history, if your parents or grandparents needed nursing care, you may also need similar care in the future. Uh, if you travel a lot overseas, that's kind of a moot point right now, but eventually we hopefully can move around the world again. Um, if you do that, if that's something you want to do, then you want to make sure that you pick a plan that has um, coverage for emergency care in a foreign country. So also when you're deciding between the plans, uh, keep in mind you can pay a higher premium for more comprehensive coverage, or you can pay less for your premium and potentially pay more out of pocket. It's, um, you know, it's the same old thing with insurance. You're, um, you're always sort of gambling. Are you gonna get more insurance and, 
in the event that you need it or get less and hope that you don't need it. So, so here we have um, a simple chart that shows all of the plans and um, information on what they cover. So as you can see here in column A, it's only four things that are checked off. And as we go across, you can see that right in here in the middle, there's a lot more things checked off. So A is the least inclusive. F, um, FHD and G are the most inclusive. If you are signing up for Medicare after January 1st, 2020, plan C, F and FHD are not available to you. If you signed up prior to January 1st, 2020, you can continue to sign up for these plans, but they are discontinued um, from January 1st, 2020 going forward. The difference in them is the uh, Medicare Part B deductible. If you look, Plan D is the exact same as Plan C with the exception of this Part B deductible. Um, the same thing with plans F, FHD, that stands for high deductible, and then plan G, um, the difference again is this Medicare Part B deductible, and we'll talk about that a little bit later um, in terms of the differences in them for cost, but I just wanted to give you a quick view of that. So uh, secret number two. The Medigap plans are standard, but rates are not. So let's look at this a little closely. So the insurance premiums within a particular plan can vary thousands of dollars a year for the exact same coverage. So let's look at this. We've got a, a woman, she's 65, she lives in Glen Allen, and she's decided plan G is the right plan for her. So uh, she ran her Medigap report and uh, looking at the providers that are have a safety rating of a B, B minus or higher, um, she sees that the lowest premium she can get is $1,255 or she could pay $3,102. And if we do some quick math on that, we see that that's $1,847 uh, difference between the two. So. I'm pretty sure that she's going to go ahead and pick um, the the lowest premium one at, at $1,255. And if she continues um, to do this over 10 years, it's an $18,470 savings just by having run the report and seeing that there is a provider, an uh, insurance company that has that plan um, with a safety rating of a B minus or higher for $1,255 versus um, the highest one being $3,102. And obviously there are a lot of uh, premium different costs in between those two. So let's take a look now at this gentleman. He's 68, he lives in Glen Ellen also. And he thinks that uh, plan A is the way for him to go. So he runs his report and he finds that um, for plan A with providers that have a safety rating of a B minus or higher, the lowest premium is $1,116 or he could pay um, $2,866. And of course the, the delta between those two is $1,750. So big difference and over 10 years that's $17,500. So again, a, a big savings if you have all of the information in front of you and you're able to make that choice. Now we have a couple, she's 65, he's 68, and they both are gonna go with plan G. And so their combined premiums, the lowest premium for the two of them, so they're each running a report and they're picking the lowest premium available to them. Um, combining those is uh, $2,698 or they could pick the highest premiums available and that would be $7,057. So if we look at that, uh, the difference there, it's $4,359 annually and um, over 10 years, $43,590. And I think we might have a question. 
Yes, they will. The slides will be available afterwards. I'm going to send the slideshow to Tanya and then she can distribute them to everyone. All right, let's see, it's moving on here. Oh, All right, so we're gonna come back to the, this chart with the plan. So I said I was gonna come back to this. So we talked a little bit before about um, that if you are just joining, signing up for Medicare after January 1st, 2020, um, a few of the plans are no longer available to you. So, um, and we'll talk about this more, but I wanted to show you something. So if you wanted plan C and you've just signed, you know, you're just signing up for Medicare this year in 2020, um, it's not available to you, but the, the, the plan that is just like it is plan D. It doesn't include the uh, Part B deductible, but take a look down here, the annual premium for plan D, and this is based on a 65 year old woman living in Glen Ellen. The annual premium is $1,409, but if you choose plans, if you were able to choose plan C, it would be $1,674. Well, the difference is that $198 uh, deductible for part B. So there's, I did the math yesterday. I forget what I came up with. Oh, 265. Um, $265 difference. Well, that's considerably more than $198. So actually um, choosing plan D is the better value. Same thing with plan F and plan G. The difference here is again, this uh, part B deductible, $198. It's included here. It's not included here, but guess what? Here it costs you $1,565 annually and here it's $1,255. So that's $310 um, difference. So it's actually, again, more economical, makes more sense to choose plan G. So I was talking about safety ratings before. So let's, let's dig into that a little bit more. So how safe is your insurer? So Weiss does the safety ratings and um, if you haven't gone and looked on the database um, to the safety ratings, we provide safety ratings for banks, credit unions and insurance companies. And these safety ratings are designed, uh, they're all about the um, financial strength and stability of a company. So um, if you're choosing, um, a plan and insure and an and an insurer that has a an A or a B rating. Well, you can see that's excellent or good. Um, so they have a very good um, safety rating. They're financially stable. Uh, C is is okay as well. Um, these are the ones you want to stay away from. The the ones in the red. Um, in an adverse economic climate, these are the ones that might not be able to, that might not be there for you when you need them. So that's just a little bit about the safety ratings. So third secret here is safer insurers are not necessarily the most expensive. So let's take a look at that. So here we have, um, we're gonna compare plan G. So we have four insurers within plan G, pick the first one with an A rating, excuse me. Um, the annual premium is 1575. We have insurer number two, and that is $1,255. Insurer number three has a C rating, um, $1,125. And insurer number four has a D rating and it's $1,243. Um, depending on where you are in the country, these numbers can be spread out a lot more. But as you can see, there really isn't a whole lot of difference here in terms of the premium. It isn't based on their rating. Um, it's based on whatever the company is charging. But um, as you can see, you don't necessarily have to go to a lower uh rated company to get a good price. So here we have uh, 
a D-rated company at 1243, well, for not a whole lot more money, you can be rest assured that with this B-rated company, um, they're financially stable and you're only paying a little bit more annually. So um, just wanted to point that out. So higher premiums don't mean you're getting coverage from a stronger, more financially stable insurance provider. And the last secret is you get to make the choice. You get to look at all the information that's available um, for all of the plans that are available to you with the providers that are writing those plans and uh, make the choice that's best for you. You can choose more coverage for less, reduce your premium, and then balance the financial safety of your insurer with your choice of plan. So let's just review those four secrets again. Medigap plans offer identical coverage, uh, meaning that within each plan, plan A, plan B, whatever, whichever plan you've decided works best for you, all of the providers that are listed on your report are going to give you the exact same benefits and coverage. The plans are standard, but the rates are not. So now you get to look and find the, you know, you've chosen the plan that works for you. Now you find the, the rate that works best for you. Safer insurers are not necessarily more expensive. So um, again, looking at that report, you can compare uh, rates and um, providers and their safety ratings and decide what works best for you. Lastly, you get to make the choice. So the WISE Financial Ratings Medigap Report helps you make the right choice for you and your specific uh, situation. You get to pick the right coverage for the lowest rate. You get to save valuable time and money. So the money, that part's easy because you're gonna choose the rate that works best for you. But the time, um, pulling this information together that you get, the report takes roughly 30 seconds to run um, from start to finish from logging in and running the report probably a minute, maybe two minutes. Um, the information that you're gonna get would take you weeks, possibly months to collect and organize. You get to pick the best and most affordable plan from all of the available providers customized just for you. So you'll see when we run the report at the end here, we're gonna put in your age, your gender and your zip code. And that is what, um, gives, spits out all of the information, all of the plans and providers that are available to you. So it's everything that's available within your zip code. And of course you get to do this for free because Glen Allen Public Library subscribes to the Weiss Financial Ratings Database. So some questions and things that people uh, need to think about. So, um, you know, be aware, not all insurers cover all areas. So some insurers might not have the plan that you want in your area, or they might not have the lowest rate. Um, there is a website called My Medicare Matters. If you use their plan search tool, you may be direct, you will be directed to a commercial partner's website and they may only offer a limited number of plans. So you won't necessarily see everything that's available to you in your area. So uh, talk about making changes. So first off, we talked about this at the very beginning. You sign up for Medicare when you turn 65. I said, go ahead and get your get signed up for part A. It doesn't change anything. It just gets you kind of in the system and um, it, it'll just help you down the road because if, if they think you've delayed, if you're delayed in signing up, it could cost you, um, which is this next one. Um, if you don't sign up for Medigap when you join Medicare, I'm sorry. If you don't sign up for Medigap when you join Medicare at 65 or when you stop working, it can be tricky to sign up later. They may subject, you might be subject to medical underwriting, denied coverage or charged extra. If you have a Medigap plan now and want to change your plan or your insurer, that's, we talked about open enrollment, that's right now, goes to December 7th, uh, you, that's when you do it. Your coverage begins January 1. If you um, currently have a Medicare Advantage plan and you want to disenroll from that, you do that during the disenrollment period, which is January 1 to, Feb to February 14th. If you join Medicare Advantage first or have it for more than a year, 
it can be difficult to leave and join Medigap later. This is something that depends. It goes from state to state, um, what their rules are. Um, I did a program in Connecticut recently and their rules for that are um, much more lenient than they are in other states. So it will be something you would need to check on. So we talked about this before. Um, if you start Medicare Part A after January 1, 2020, there's those three plans that aren't available to you, Plan C, Plan F, and the High Deductible Plan F. If you join prior to January 1st, 2020, you can still continue, you can continue to enroll in Plan C, Plan F, and the High Deductible Plan F. And again, consider Plan D instead of Plan C or Plan G instead of Plan F. The difference is the 198, uh, $198 Part B deductible. So um, we talked about Medicare Part D, that's not covered. Um, some Medicare Advantage plans cover it. Uh, Medigap does not cover it. So, uh, but I wanted you to be aware of this information. If you need to get a Medicare Part D prescription plan, you go to medicare.gov forward slash find a plan. That's where you shop for them. Note that fees and copays will vary by plan and the drugs that they cover. So you want to have um, a list of your prescriptions with you when you start to shop for that because you'll obviously want to pick a plan that has your has the prescriptions that you need. Just to give you an idea of how these might be price a plan might be priced, you could have a $435 deductible, a $24 a month premium, and then um, co-pays and possibly co-insurance. If you join Part D late and didn't have qualifying coverage from another insurer, they might uh, you might have to pay a penalty based on how long you were not covered. If you decide against Part D, you can explore uh, discount cards that are available. Just be aware that some of them have monthly or yearly fees. So again, let's take a look uh, questions that you want to be aware of when you're shopping for your drug coverage. Are the prescriptions on the plans formulary? So that's why I said have that list of your prescriptions in front of you when you when you start searching. Um, you'll want to know if the plan has any coverage re restrictions such as prior authorizations. Uh, you'll want to know what you're going to pay at the pharmacy. So what are your co-payments or your co-insurance? And then obviously you want to know what your monthly premium is and what the annual deductible is. So also the service area for the plan, these things tend to be based on zip codes. So you want to make sure that you're picking a plan that, um, that the coverage area includes where you live. You also want to be able to, well, you want to know if you can fill the prescriptions at the pharmacies that you already use. Um, can you fill the prescriptions when you travel? Are there extra costs if you go outside of your network? And then you want to look at uh, the total drug costs covered in the initial coverage period. Now this information uh, for 2021, it isn't, um, it hasn't been finalized, but there, I know that there are some changes coming based on an article I read, but there was no uh, concrete information about it. But right now, uh, there's something called the coverage gap or a donut hole. So um, as it shows here, most plans cover a maximum amount of $4,020. If your drugs cost more than that, you pay more when you're in what they call the coverage gap or the donut hole. Then once you reach a total drug cost of $6,350 a year, something called catastrophic coverage kicks in and it lowers your costs again. So how this is changing um, for 2021, I don't no, I just want to point it out to you so that you're aware of it if you're going to be sitting down and shopping for Part D coverage. So the Medigap tool is designed to help you find and select the best Medigap policy for you with the strongest companies for the least amount of money. Everybody's different, so um, I urge you to talk to your doctor about your future healthcare needs so that you make sure that the plan you're selecting will give you the coverage that you need. Once you've selected a plan, go ahead and talk to the insurance company that you've selected to make sure um, any specific questions that you have get answered. 
you can also go to a ship counselor, um, make an appointment to speak to them over the phone or in person. My guess is it'll most likely be over the phone and ask a lot of questions there um, because you're going to get this PowerPoint presentation. This is the uh, website that you want to go to and um, you can get the help there. So how do you get your own Medigap report? Um, you go to the Glen Allen Public Library website, uh, go to the digital library and there's a drop down box and you select research investments and scroll down to Weiss. So we're gonna jump out there right now and I'll show you what it looks like. It's over here. Here we go. All right, so we are gonna go to digital library and we're going to click on research investments. And here we go, Weiss Financial Ratings. And you come to this login. I do not have a Glen Ellen Public Library card, so I am going to take you out to here, which is, um, I have access to the to the database through my company since I work for them. And here is where you would run your Medigap report. So if you come along this light gray bar, here we have Medigap. So you're just gonna click here. And here you're gonna enter some information. Ask for a first name. You don't have to put your name in, but you do have to at least put something in there, a keystroke. Next thing is your um, email address. We do, you do need to put that in. I can't talk and type at the same time. I apologize at greathouse.com. Um, we don't collect this information and sell it out to other companies for lists. So um, all we're gonna do is email you your Medigap report. So. Um, don't worry about putting your email address in here. We're not going to load up your email box with lots of junky spam. So um, next thing you're going to do is uh, select by age and gender and then put in the zip code, which for Glen Ellen is 60137. Oops, numlock is not on, 60137. And then click get report. Now I have a report all ready to go, but I like to do this because it runs very quickly. Uh, so I want you to see how quick that it happens. Sometimes less, less quick than others, but it should be coming up. We have some questions. Okay. Uh, don't see it, not seeing the right screen, still seeing the library site. Okay. Hang on. Uh, you should see it. All right, so the report is ready. Um, We should be back on the, um, we should be on the white screen now, correct? I see the white screen app, but I've just sent a, a message to everyone through the chat to see. Um, I'm gonna do... I get a little hung okay. up. But... Okay, so we're hearing that it looks good. Um, the okay, sorry. We're able the, to see it. Yeah, the screen sharing always trips me up every time. I apologize. So. Uh, this would come up so it says view report and then email sent successfully. You could we could view it right here, but I have it all set up uh, already in Adobe. So this is the 65 year old female here. And here it is. I like to do it this way. It's much easier to click around. And so here's our cover page. Um, so this is uh, this was prepared for a 65 year old female living in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And um, so it gives you the first 23 pages are boilerplate, um, gives you lots and lots of information. And I know it is um, tempting to go and go right to the rates, but um, it's good to go through this information. Let me check this. Oh, 
Oh, we're seeing this now, right? Everybody? Yes. Okay. Um, so key decisions to make. Should you uh, seek to get better health insurance? Um, why is this not working? There we go. How should I cover the gap between medical bills and what Medicare pays? So uh, which Medigap plan should I choose? Lots of great information here. And uh, which insurance companies should I buy my Medigap plan from? So um, lots of information here. Uh, questions about Medigap. So here, this chart shows you um, what the different benefits are and what is covered. So here's the benefit for, this is part A, uh, what Medicare pays and what you're gonna pay. So that was that out-of-pocket um, discussion that we had. All right. All right, Amy, uh, Tanya, can you tell me if you're seeing the screen now? I'm seeing part one answers to your questions about Medigap, but I know some people are saying they're not seeing the info, the info is not on the screen and they're not seeing the report. So if you are not seeing the report, oh, okay, they're seeing part one now. Okay. And that's what I see, I see part one as well. Okay, all right, so everybody's pretty much up to speed. So what I'm saying is in this information from here to here, this is all of the boilerplate information um, that the report provides and a lot of what we've been discussing through the, well, what I've been talking about through the presentation. Um, again, what does Medicare cover? Uh, which plan should you choose? So it goes through uh, quite a bit of information here that you can take a look at and really dig into. Here is that uh, similar chart to what I had in the, um, the presentation of the different plans and what they cover. Uh, what I wanted to get to here is the rates. So here we have, so we ran the plan for a 65 year old woman living in Glen Allen and we're looking at plan A now and he, these are all the rates. So these are all of this is in plan A. These are all of the people that uh, this woman could buy her insurance company from, what their safety ratings are and what the, the annual premium would be. So if we come up here, we talked about safety ratings, that is uh, about the, the financial strength and stability of a company. So these are companies with a safety rating of a B minus or higher. And then the organization from there is by price. So here's the lowest premium available for a company with a safety rating of a B minus or higher, all the way down to the highest premium. So we go from $900 and we're, I'm looking at um, for a, a non tobacco using person. So we go from 900 to $2,555. So as you can see, there's lots of information here for you and you can take a look and pick the company. You know, if you have a favorite company that you wanna use and there's just a few dollars difference or whatever, then you can go that route. Um, if we come down here and look at Plan G. So we said earlier Plan A was the least inclusive and Plan G was the most inclusive. Um, here we have Plan G for companies with a safety rating of a B minus or higher. And I see we've got questions. Um, are the report premiums for 2021? So Interestingly enough, um, the premiums don't go up annually. What will happen is they may, a company may change their premiums um, during any time during the year. Because remember, people are signing up for Medicare throughout the year. You know, as your turn every, you know, every day of the year, somebody's turning 65. So um, 
the premiums may not change, you know, they may change, you know, one company may change them in July, another company may change them in August. What we do is once a month, we run a, a they do something and, and any new information loads up into the reports. So um, it isn't an annual thing every January 1, there's new, um, new premiums loaded into the system. So what you're seeing at any time is the most up-to-date information that we have. What's the difference between multiple same company pricing, example, Blue Cross Blue Shield? That I think is different types of programs and you would have to call that insurer. So if you had your report in front of you and you saw, uh, let's see, what we Blue Cross Blue Shield select TOB, I think that's tobacco versus Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Um, that might be the difference uh, where it says preferred. I don't know what that means. That is, uh, I guess, um, unique to the companies. Uh, so like I said, if you, um, once you pick a plan, if you decide that plan G is the one for you, it's gonna, it makes the most sense for you and you um, pick a company, then call that company up and ask a lot of questions. And then if you've got, you know, I would say probably have a, you know, it's up to you, but maybe have a, you know, a, choice your number one choice the second choice and a third choice just in case because you if you make the phone calls and you find out something that doesn't uh, ring true or it's different whatever you want to be able to get all the information so when you call them up you could ask them about the different plans that you're seeing here the same company and why is there different pricing and they'll give you, when you call them, they'll give you all of the information for the plans that are available. They'll give you all of whatever is available to you that they're providing. So um, we talked about plan A being the least inclusive and plan G being the most inclusive. So in this case, plan A for this woman, the least expensive one was $900 annually and the most expensive one was $1,255 annually. So a little over $300 difference, well, $355 difference um, across the year. So it's just about $30 a month. So somebody might, having this information and being able to set it down on paper and see it and say, okay, I could increase my coverage by uh, spending $30 more a month. Maybe that's a decision that you can make and, but, and you're able to make it because you've got all the information in front of you without um, having to make a lot of phone calls and you can decide that, you know what, let me go for the, let me pay the extra $30 a month and go for the higher coverage. Um, Julian, yes, I believe you can. Julian asked, can you go back and forth between companies each year with no penalty at open enrollment time? Yes, I believe you can. Um, that's what open enrollment is about. And as long as, and that's why I said, go ahead and get yourself signed up for part A as soon as you can, once you're turning 65, that gets you kind of, I would say on the treadmill, but it gets you into the system so that, you know, once you're in there, um, you're, you're, you're part of the process, um, you're registered in there and they can't say, well, no, you weren't signed up. So um, just getting yourself logged in to um, Medicare being, having your Medicare part A really is helpful. And then, you know, if you're still working and you've got insurance, you don't need part B and part B costs you. So um, you don't wanna, you don't wanna be paying extra if you already have coverage through your company or your spouse's company. So if we come down, there we go, here, so we see that, okay, we've got all of these companies providing um, plan G with a, a, and they have a safety rating of a B minus or higher. But as you come down and look at uh, anybody with a C minus to a C plus, there still are a lot of companies here. So um, again, you do have lots of choices. You come down here and this plan D, I 
that's up to you. I don't think that really this is the lowest premium here in Plan D, and it's what eight uh, da, 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 twelve dollars a year lower than the um, the one up that has a safety rating of a B or a B minus. So, you know, for thirteen twelve dollars, I think I'd go with the with the B rated company. Was there another question? Um, Julianne asked, do you know anything about discounts when husband and wife sign up at the same time? That might be something that uh, an insurance company might do for you, but um, when you run the report, uh, you run it for yourself and you get what's, what's available to you. So this report is for a 65 year old woman and um, change my screen. Hopefully I can do this successfully. It's not going to let me do it. All right. Um, hopefully, you all can see this one. And this is for the for the uh, sixty eight year old male living in Glen Ellen, Illinois. So if we go to the rates. Um, Tanya, can, can you see this new screen? I see part three, Medigap premium rates. Plan A. Hold on, I need to move my chat boxes. Yes, plan A. Okay. So this is for the gentleman who's um, 68 years old. So um, if we come down to plan, you know, and some, again, depending on um, healthcare needs, Somebody may need a plan G and somebody may need a plan A. Um, and, you know, once you're, again, once you're doing Medigap and, you know, you do plan A for a number of years and then decide, you know what, I'm going to jump up to plan G, you could do that. Um, you could do a high deductible plan G if it's, let's see, I don't even know if it's available here. Yep, you do have it. I was in another area in, in Illinois. They did not have the high deductible. So um, Plan G high deductible, you've got a $2,340 deductible. But um, if you just want to, again, it's your insurance is hedging bets. So if you want to have it available to you, if you need it, but pay a lower premium because it's $527 versus the... Um, Plan A, which is $1,100, $1,116, and it doesn't cover as much. So um, you're going to have to pay your, your deductibles, uh, $1,408 deductible if you go into the hospital, um, the $198 Plan B. So you start adding those things up, you very quickly get close to the, the $2,340 of the high deductible. So again, what this report does is it lays everything out for you. You have all the information in a very organized fashion, and then you can make the decisions of what makes the most sense for you. I have a friend who um, unfortunately went through breast cancer. She has plan G because she knows that her healthcare needs, she needs something that's very comprehensive. So um, it just, de it depends. So. If your insurance company is going to give you some sort of a discount because you're signing up together, um, great. That's a question to ask the insurance company. But I would still say, even if you're going directly to insurance company, run this report so you have all of the, the information in front of you and you can ask some questions because um, it's, it's just good to have all the information. Okay, um, the last thing I want to show you here on the report 
is down here. It's an index of insurers. Um, so the companies that are here in the report, uh, they're, they're listed alphabetically. We have their safety ratings. Um, by the way, uh, the U is unrated. That just means that there isn't enough, they haven't reported in enough information for uh, Weiss to give them a rating. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It just means that they haven't reported in enough information to, uh, to rate them. So uh, phone numbers are here and you can um, give them a call and ask all your questions. Also, we have uh, listed a number of different reference organizations, websites, so that you can go ahead and get questions answered. Um, go to the websites, in some cases, phone numbers, and just be gathering all the information that you need to make the right decision. So um, are there any more questions? All right then. Yeah, I haven't gotten any new questions in, so. Okay. Um, let's go back up here. Get down to the bottom. So again, um, to run your report, You'll go to the website, um, go to digital library, select research investments, scroll down to Weiss, sign in, and then on that light gray bar all the way over to the right, select Medigap, enter in, um, just put initials for your name if you want. You do have to put in your email address and then age and uh, gender and zip code, and then you download your report. Um, it will go to your email address so that you can um, just kind of save it, download it as a PDF, and you can pull it up. You can print it out if you're going to go have a meeting somewhere. Um, but you'll always have that information available, and, you know, you can run it um, as you get closer to, you know, when you're going to sign up or something. But um, certainly very simple to do and um, hopefully will be helpful to you. So. I thank you for joining us today. And if you have any questions, please forward them to Tanya and she will get them to me. And I see we do have one more question. No Medicare Advantage um, because the, I'm talking about the Medigap because we have the Medigap tool on the, um, the database. So uh, Julianne had asked if we we're discussing Medicare Advantage options, so. I would say do your research on both and then do what you think makes the most sense for you. We don't have a tool for the Medicare Advantage, unfortunately. Okay, well, if there's no other questions, I wanna thank Paige for being a part of this and presenting this to our members. And I hope everyone was able to get something out of this. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to contact me directly, Tanya King at T-K-I-N-G at G-E-P-L dot org. Thanks again to everyone for participating.